Hi, this is Minister Pat Holmes at Saints and Assignment Ministries coming to you live once again from the secret place and once again decreeing the covenant blessings of the Lord upon you, your household, everything that pertains to you. I want to remind you that our Lord has issued some mandates. He has said he is our shepherd, we shall not want. He has said trust in the Lord with all of our heart, lean not on our own understanding and all of our ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. Oh, glory to God. We serve an awesome God. He'll never leave us and he'll never forsake us. He said again, trust him. Well, tonight I want to share on a powerful subject that the Holy Ghost downloaded in my heart. I want to put this graphic up first to introduce it. This is a depiction of a young lady being hypnotized because we're going to deal with Satan's hypnotic powers when we operate in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life and tonight's subject is with eyes wide open with eyes wide open i want to take you back to a story in numbers chapter 25 a very sad story and i want to set it up and introduce you to that story the story will center around this couple who were in lust and their name, he is a Simeonite leader of the tribe of Simeon. His name is Zimri. His name means my music. She was a Midianite woman over in Moab, and her name means my lie. Now I want you to put those together. My music, my lie. We're going to bring forth that we can march to a certain drumbeat that will bring forth a lie and have a lethal message at the end because they both died. So we're going to deal with that. Let me just tell you the story. In Numbers 25, God's chosen people, the Jewish people, had come through 40 years in the wilderness. Remember, they had come out of captivity and slavery down in Egypt, and they make it to their final encampment to a place called Shittim. And when they were going to cross the Jordan River, the next step was to cross over the Jordan River and they would be in the promised land. Let me show you this map to show you how close it was to put emphasis on it. Look to the right, you see the word Shittim and you see the little blue line going upward. That's the Jordan River. It has the word Jordan River written right by it. And on the other side was Gilgal and then Jericho. So this is the last encampment over in Shittim and the next thing would be to cross the Jordan River and finally in the promised land. 40 years of believing God to arrive in the promised land. Moses had already sent a reconnaissance team in. They came back with fruit that was so huge, which was to verify the fact that the land was full of abundance and full of sweetness. Many had died in the wilderness and had never made it to this point of Shittim. But you know what? The devil was waiting on them. There is always the devil that's working and strategizing to prevent us com from coming into our destined end that the Lord has for us, our destined blessing that the Lord has for us. So I want to just tell this story. I do want to mention that I uh, looked up the distance and it said 911 kilometers and I thought that's so interesting. Instead of saying 911 kilometers, I would use the term 911 because because it was a 9-11 for God's chosen people. So they are there, and what occurs, let me go to page one of my outline. I could tell it, but I want you to see how the devil set them up. And here at uh, Baal Peor, in verse 1, number 25, uh, chapter 25 and verse 1 and it says and Israel abode in Shittim and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab now in one translation it plainly brings out that they entered into sexual affairs with the daughters of Moab Satan had already set that up let me tell you quickly how do you remember in the Old Testament King Balak and you remember Balak heard how this 
tribe of people, these 600,000 chosen people were coming through the wilderness and they were getting victories as they marched through. Every time they had to have war with an opposing nation, God's people won because God was with them. So they were coming through in triumph, treading upon serpents and scorpions and all the work of the devil. And Balak heard they were coming. So he hired a false prophet named Balaam to speak a curse upon on God's chosen people. Do you remember that? So I love this story because the false prophet Balaam stood on the hill and he looked out at all of that huge group coming through and he said this. He said, how can I curse what God has blessed. I want you to know we're blessed tonight. Glory to God. If we obey God, the curse without cause, the scripture says, cannot alight upon us. But you know what? Balaam told Balak, Balaam the false prophet, he's the one that set up this strategy. But if we can cause them to sin, then they will bring a curse upon themselves. Oh my God. And that is exactly how he set it up. He strategized. I want you to know the enemy is always strategizing to bring us down. This is why we have to check ourselves. There was a, a prayer that uh, I remember my mom and all the saints of old used to pray. Lord, strengthen me where I'm weak and build me up where I'm torn down. Everybody knows their strength and their weaknesses. And we have to be aware of the fact that there is an enemy strategizing to invade and bring us down. And this is what he did. So we go down to verse 2, and it says, They called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. These beautiful Moabite women called the people. It was the men. Called them to the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat, and listen to this, and bow down to their gods. And that's when they messed up. Listen to verse 3. And Israel joined himself to Baal Peor. The God was named Baal in Peor. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. I mean God was upset. They had forgotten Jehovah God who had brought them out of Egypt, out of slavery, being mistreated all the generations before 400 years of being mistreated by the pharaohs. He had brought them through the desert. He had kept their clothing in top condition. The Bible said the clothes didn't wear out. The shoes did not wear out. He had worked miracles. He had fed them. He'd given them water out of the rock. And they get right here where they almost cross over and they get deceived by the enemy. Again tonight's subject, with eyes wide open because of the lust of the flesh. Oh my God. And verse 3, did I read that? I read verse 3. So let me go down to verse 4 and this is what it says. And the Lord said unto Moses, take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. See back then judgment came swiftly and I think sometimes this is what distorts our understanding of who God is. We are now in a dispensation of grace. Thank God for the amazing grace. But after this dispensation does come judgment, we will have to give an account for our deeds here. Oh my God. But thank God for grace. We have time to get it right. Glory to God. So anyway, we see that they died and listen to this. Talking about bad timing. I'm getting ready to deal with the two people in the picture I showed you with Zimri and and Cosby. And it says, And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Medianitish woman. Now let me bring out the word median means strife. A woman brought the woman that carried strife represented strife because they served another God. So they brought a Medianitish woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping before 
the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. God had already released judgment. All of these leaders had been hung up. The people were weeping all over the place and he boldly walks in with his lover on his arm. A lover that served a false god on top of that. Oh, but right at that time, there was one that saw what was going on and he moved by the zeal of the Lord. Let me read that to you. Verse 7, and when Phine Yes the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, this was Moses' great nephew, the priest, he was a priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand and went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. And the next verse says, verse 9, and those that died in that plague were 20 and 4,000. I want to bring that out. 24,000 people died as a result of one plague because of the fierce anger of the Lord. God is a jealous God. And thank God we are now under dispensation of grace. But it does not, uh, what's the word, eradicate the fact that God is a jealous God. And he said he will have no other gods before him. This is why we have to do a performance review on ourselves and check ourselves. And again, and ask God to strengthen us where we're weak. This man, let me, this leader, this leader was led off simply because of the lust of the flesh. He had been taught. He knew the statutes of God, statutes having to do with the limitations of God, the commandments of God. He knew all of that. Moses had taught them, but yet because of the weakness, the lust of the flesh, he entered into a relationship with this woman. He as a leader, and how much of that goes on today? Oh my God, we could stay on that for a while. But tonight's teaching is a warning. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord go to and fro. God sees everything and he knows everything. And even though you think you're hiding it from your congregation or whoever it is or your family, oh my God, God sees it all. Again, my music, my life. I want to show you a graphic. I had a an actual video, but because of copyright stuff involved with the video. I, I can't show the video. But I was studying this week on a cuttlefish, C-U-T-T-L-E, fish, cuttlefish, in the marine, the, cu the, the uh, cuttlefish. And the cuttlefish is an enemy of the crab. And I began to think about crabs. You know how crabs are clingy? And some people in their personality, they just have to cling on to somebody. They can't, uh, and thank God for marriage and love. He gave us all of that. But when you're just so out of order that you put, as we used to say, the horse before the court you're not married, but yet you're entering into sexual relationships. Oh my God, that's out of order. And that will bring a curse upon you. So in this video that I watched concerning the cuttlefish, which is the enemy of the crab and of the shrimp, it brings out that the cuttlefish has the ability to hypnotize the crab. You know why? The cuttlefish has the ability to change colors and illuminate all these colors and I begin to think about mankind. Sometimes you get hooked up with somebody and you'll see a sweet personality then all of a sudden the Jekyll and Hyde part comes out. Let me show you this graphic of the cuttlefish. I'm telling you, look at how it radiates all the beautiful colors and this isn't doing it justice at all the way the video go on YouTube and find that video is so interesting to watch but how that crab became mad mesmerized by that cuttlefish and the cuttlefish took it down. It has 18 legs and two tentacles on it and its main objective is to deal with the clingy, clingy personality, the crab. And so it is amongst mankind. I was watching a story on ID not long ago and it was so sad. Uh, this guy, he, he actually uh, married this, this girl and he took her to his home. 
and his home was way out in the woods. The people that talked on this special story brought out there were no lights. They were so deep out in the woods, there were no lights even out there on the light pole. So she was just in love because we're going to deal with words like mesmerized, satisfied. She was satisfied in the beginning, and then she became victimized and traumatized and then crucified because he killed her on the end. So anyway, like that cuttlefish, he began to change his personality. She began to see other characteristics coming out. So the first thing he did, he forbade her to uh, go to church. He forbade her to be with her family. And then the next thing, he wrecked his car. So he took her car because he had to have a vehicle to get to work. Then he took her cell phone. Now he owned, he and his brother owned a pig uh, farm. And so she came up missing and family and everybody was concerned. Where was she? And after investigation, they found her body after three months. Oh my God. And what had happened, what they, what they figured out later, the law enforcement, he had uh, raped a young teenager many, many years before, before he married this, this wife. And she had come into the knowledge of that. And when she presented that to him, he silenced her mouth. We're talking about, let me put my little picture back up, with eyes wide open. Now, in her case, when those personalities begin to change like that, that should have been a sign. Oh, my God. But sometimes the clingy one, she didn't want to have to go to relatives and say my marriage failed. Well, sometimes we have to just get out of a situation. Sometimes we do. Glory to God. I won't go into that tonight. But we I wanted to show you the cuttlefish. Now let me go back to my outline because I want to switch gears right here. So we brought that out. Let me go to the next page of the outline with eyes wide open. I think I already did that one. Let me see. Let me see. We're going to go to this page of the outline. And uh, we're going, I want to just bring out right here in the middle, uh, at the top, in yellow, mesmerized, satisfied, because normally, uh, when, when uh, just go back to Zimri, he was satisfied with this uh, Midianite woman that he had the nerve to bring right into the camp, right in the sight of Moses. Oh, my God. So it shows he was satisfied. And then victimized. These are things that the devil does to God's chosen people. Then traumatized and then crucified. Now, it does not have to always be a literal death, but the enemy delights in bringing death again to our divine destiny. He loves to hinder us and hinder the things that God has for us. And again, Balaam strategized that attack against God's chosen people. He said, how can I curse what God has blessed? He realized he couldn't curse them, but they could bring a curse upon themselves through disobedience, and he used the lust of the flesh. The Bible says all this in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It's just good to obey God. Here on the outline, the meaning of the word mesmerized, I got it highlighted in ye yellow. It means to transfix in number one. And the second dot, uh, to have someone's attention. Oh my God, completely. And that's what happens when you get mesmerized or hypnotized. Have someone's attention completely uh, so that they cannot think. Oh, and that is exactly what happened in that story with Zimri. He got so bold that he strutted right in front of Moses. It is amazing what the lust of the flesh will do. And then some of the syn synonyms are again, mesmerized to arrest. It means to bedazzle and listen to this catch up and look at this word enchant that is exactly what happened to our mom and dad in the garden of eden the devil enchanted them he beguiled them and it means to enthrall it means to fascinate and then to grip he'll get a grip on you just like that cuttlefish got that grip on that crab in that video that i watched and the crab died oh my god again mesmerized satisfied victimized traumatized and then crucified 
And I want to end with this story that we're all familiar with in the New Testament. See, the enemy tried to mesmerize Jesus. Do you remember that? You remember that 40-day temptation? And it says here in verse 1, it says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit. You see, that's the big S, talking of the Holy Spirit, into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. I want you to know in this life, the devil would put temptations in our path. But Jesus fasted and prayed, and he was able to overcome the temptation. And that is the same remedy for us. As we fast and as we pray, we crucify the flesh and the dictates of the flesh. We follow the Spirit. Then we go down to verse 2, and it says, And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards a hunger. And then here we go. Look at verse 3. And it says, and when the tempter, because that's what the devil is, came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Oh, but Jesus had an answer, had an answer, and I love it. And it says, but he answered and said, it is written. That's why we have to study the word of God and answer the devil back and the temptations of the flesh with the word of God that has an anointing on it that will Will defeat the enemy every time. So Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We go to verse 5. Then the devil taketh him up to the holy city and setteth him on at the pinnacle of a temple, set it him on a pinnacle of the temple. So the temptation, you know, became a little bit more testy, a little bit more severe. Now listen to what he told him. And said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, listen to the devil quote the word of God, it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and their hands, uh, in their hands, and they shall bear thee up, least at any time you dash thy foot against the stone. Lisa, yeah, any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. So he quotes to the Lord that there are angels on assignment over you, Jesus. So go on and just throw yourself down off of this tentacle. But look what Jesus said again. He just quoted the word. We're going down to verse 7. Jesus said, said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And that's exactly what the enemy, when we operate in the flesh, will cause us to do. I'm reminded right now. You remember Samson and you remember Delilah and even his parents, you know, begin to challenge him. Why are you going down there to that woman? That is not a woman that's even serving the same God we're serving. That is not a woman that knows Jehovah God and is in our culture. She's not one of the Jewish people. He said, but she delighted me. And he kept toying with God. He kept tempting God. And most of us know the story. He kept going down to the one that delighted him with eyes wide open. There's that teaching, that title, with eyes wide open because he was warned and he already knew the covenant commandments of the Lord. So she was after his secret. She was the enemy. The enemy is after the secret, the anointing. We know Samson had an anointing upon him that had to do with the seven, I think it was seven braids that he had on his head. And he finally told Delilah if she kept pressing and pressing that he was under a covenant contract and he had to keep those locks on his head and you know what she did she had the Philistines come in and they cut those locks off and he lost his power and he lost his anointing and the Bible says how he got up from her bed and shook himself thinking the power and anointing would come upon him as it had many other times that he had been down there in sexual sin but this time there was no power. The spirit of the Lord had departed. Oh my God. See, we can't keep torn with God. And there are those that are in leadership that know the word of God, that have been chosen to help lead God's people and yet they walk the walk of Samson. They walk the walk of Zimri. They fall prey to that. But tonight is a warning through the word of the Lord. Glory to God. We go down to verse 8. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. I'm telling you, that devil was sweetening up the deal, was he not? And we go to verse 9 and say, 
saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. That's exactly what he wants. He wants our worship. And when we disobey God and fall prey to all of his hypnotic presentation, we are worshiping him. Because he delights in the fact when we disobey. You see, he can't go back to heaven. He's been kicked out. And he knows that is our destined place. So it is his mandate to stop us. But we can't play. Glory to God. So he wanted to give Jesus all the glories. And look at what Jesus said. Uh, then saith Jesus to him, Get thee thence, Satan, for it is written. You see how Jesus kept quoting the word? Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Glory to God. And it goes on to say, uh, Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. I just wanted to bring out how Jesus withstood the temptation and the trial of the enemy. He quoted the word. He fasted in advance, and he prayed. And that is one of the tools the Lord has given us in the midst of this warfare, to fast, abstain from, abstain from food. Food. And I know there are other type of fasts, but I believe in that old time Bible fast where they abstain from the food. Turn that plate over and begin to seek the Lord. I was telling my Bible study that today. We have to get girded up. You remember when the Lord came and spoke to Job in the book of Job, told him, gird up himself, gird up himself. And then even in the New Testament, when it deals uh, tells us about the armor of God, you know, we have to have on the armor of God, the salvation, the helmet on our head, and the breastplate of righteousness, and the sword of the spirit, and the, and the shield of faith, and loins gird about with truth. We have to digest the truth of the word of God so that we can be able to stand on this battlefield. Again, tonight's teaching was, let me put this little lady back up there with eyes wide open. There are many things that we enter into and we've already been warned, oh my God. And with eyes wide open, we allow the enemy to take us down a trail. The Bible says there's a way to man that seemeth right, but the end thereof are the ways of death. That devil comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. And he will bring about strategic attacks against us to lead us off and imprison us. And so it was with Zimri, that close to coming into the promises. And because of the weaknesses of the flesh, he never made it over. Oh, my God. Don't follow that same example. Father, I just pray tonight, and I thank you for this word. It is a word for the body of Christ, including myself. And, Lord God, you said the things that were written of old were written for our learning. We thank you for the story of Zimri and Cosby. And we know we do not have to follow in those footsteps. When we'll allow, Lord God, to flesh, to rule and reign, oh my God, the enemy, just like that cuttlefish, is waiting to devour us, oh my Lord, but we ask right now that you strengthen us, that you impart in us your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding, and the desire in our heart to follow you, oh Jesus, we don't want to miss out on the destined blessings that you have for us, we ask that you keep us, and that that you continue to lead us, Lord God. We want to hear on that day, well done, good and faithful servant. Oh, hallelujah. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him, with him all the way. Oh, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for my hearts this night. We want to go with you all the way, Lord God. Strengthen us where we're weak, Lord, and build us up where we're torn down. Lord, we just repent before you now, and we ask that you forgive us, Lord God. Oh, Father God, and deliver us, Lord, from the hypnotic powers of the devil, where we too, like Jesus, will say, Devil, it is written, get thee behind me. In the name of Jesus, we decree these things. This is Minister Pat Holmes signing off from the secret place. And again, I want to end with the word shalom, which means peace.